word of God to Jesus, help us see what you see. Help us to look at what you're looking at. And I believe that you'll do just that. You're so faithful and you're so honest. You know every one of us situation by situation and circumstance by circumstance. So today, I believe, will be a turning point in all of our lives if we just listen and obey in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to um, I want to begin in Matthew chapter 25. Matthew 25. And I want to talk to you about, um, I want to look at the parable of the talent. And if you read Matthew 25, you'll see that there's three parables back to back to back to back. And, and one of the things that goes through all of these parables is being ready when Jesus returns. Being ready when Jesus returns. How many of y'all know Jesus is coming back? Yeah, he's coming back, and he's coming back for his folks, and, and it's going to be awesome. And, but, he's, but we have to be ready. I'm not going to talk about being ready. But one of the things he talks about in this parable we're going to look at is not only about being ready, but he puts a strong emphasis on being accountable, being accountable for what he's given us. And that's going to be, drive us today. And I think it will be a tremendous blessing to you. Matthew 25, verse 14 says, For the kingdom of heaven. He said, this is where the kingdom works. It's a story, but he's telling you, this is how I operate. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servant. The far country traveling man is Jesus. And those who he called his servant, those are us. And delivered his goods or responsibilities to them. The Lord intends for us, y'all, to take the responsibility he's given us and to do something with them. Everyone in here has something that was given to them by God the Father. Now, verse 15 says, And to one he gave five talents, to another he gave two, and to another one, to, to another one, one, to each according to his own ability, and immediately he went on a journey. So he went on this journey and, um, you know, he was gone for a long time. And well, actually the scripture tells us here in um, verse, the next verse. Well, not the next verse. But anyway, he, w he went on his journey. But he gave them all something. And I want to take a moment to talk about that. He gave one five. He gave to another two. And gave to another one according to his own ability. Now, a talent, he's not talking about natural talent here, where, wow, this guy's a good writer, this guy's a good speaker, this guy's a good singer. That's all in here, but that's not what he's talking about here. One talent was uh, a denarius, a 6,000 denarius, 6,000 denarius. 6,000 denarius was equivalent to one day's salary. I mean, one denarius, Denarius was worth one day's salary. So he gave this guy one talent, which was equal to 6,000 denarius, and a denarius was one day's salary. Now, all you get good people that's good in math, um, you're probably ahead of me. Those of you that are not good in math, you're trying to figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> he gave this guy one, one denarius was how much? Okay, good deal. Good. Okay, one denarius for six, six, six thousand. So he gave this guy six thousand days worth of salary, gross salary. Sixteen years. He gave this guy sixteen years worth of his, his gross salary. How many of you would like to get at one time? Would like to get sixteen years of how much you make? Yeah, 16 years. So, so I'm saying this because this talent was enormous. Now, now stay with me because it's, it's powerful. So he gave him 16 years worth of salary. He said, hey, I'm going to the far country. Here you go. Okay? And then he gave one two, two talents. Well, how many years was that? 32 years salary. How many of you would like to? Have? Don't even answer. So he gave him, he gave him 32 years salary. He said, hey, hey, here, here, I'm giving it to you. I'm going away. 
Now you need to do something with it. And then he gave the other guy what? Five talents. How many years is that? Eighty years. How many? My Lord, what if you're, what if you're like 20? And, you, and, the, and the master gave you 80 years sound all at one time. All at one time. You need a serious CPA to help you out. Because, you know, because anyway, we want to, we, I love my government. Okay. So you get the picture. You get the picture. Okay. Now I'm going to start talking to you. Why did he get one five, one two, and one, and one one? Huh? Oh, y'all already know? Y'all must have, okay, yeah, according to the ability. Good, good class. Because sometimes we're like, well, that's not fair, Lord. Why, why did he get five? Why did he get two? How come I didn't get two? Because of their own what? Okay, now here's where it gets really interesting. Most people miss this. Jesus, the title of my message is looking for what he's looking for. He gave one, 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 two, one, five because of their own ability. God had experience with these guys. The master had experience with these guys. And he noticed, he, he based on previous experience, he gave them what he knew they can handle. God doesn't just dole out stuff to people like everybody gets No, 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 no. Everybody gets the amount of grace. Everybody gets the amount of faith. Everybody gets the amount of grit. Forgiveness, everybody gets that. But everybody doesn't get equal opportunities. Amen. He observed how they handle. If you were here Wednesday, we talked about faithful with little, be faithful with much. He observed how they, based on the previous experience with them, he said, I cannot give that boy. I cannot. I know he's my firstborn, but I can't give him this. I can't give him this. He's not ready for it. Based on what he's done, he's already told me, I don't want to hear about potential. God doesn't go about potential based on what he gives us or what he places into our life. He goes on what I did previously. So we're always, we're always operating and, 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 and writing our resume before God. And God is looking, man. This is what I want to talk about. God is looking at what are you doing with what you presently have? I cannot promote you or bring promotion in your life because you're not doing anything with what you have now. And, and really, it'll come to the point if you continue not to do anything, even what you have, it will be taken away. And so he's looking for, he's looking at my, 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 I like to use the word performance, my performance based on what I already have. Well, why is that important? Because a lot of times people seem to think, well, you know, I've been in the church so long, how come I don't get, how come I didn't get this? Well, God's not looking at how long you've been there. He's looking at how much you're doing. Amen. He's not looking at how long you've been saved. He's looking at how productive you are and what you're doing with what he's giving you. Now, the talents represent something. The talents represent the gifts. So, the gifts that he's given us, the gifts that he's given us, he expects something back. He expects something back. And this is where I wasn't, I wasn't looking for this. But he, he, I guess he was encouraging me. But in Hebrews chapter 6, it said, God is not unrighteous to forget your labor of love. One translation said, he's not righteous, unrighteous to overlook what you've done. See, everything you've done for the kingdom, everything you've done to promote him, everything you've done to cause people to look toward him, everything, everything, everything you've done, God said, I've noticed it, and that's a part of, and that's a part of me determining what I can bring into your life. Everything, everything, every time, everything you taught in vacation Bible school back in 1983 when you were teaching them little bad kids. Yeah. He said, "Yeah, I thought I remember that. You did that for me. You did that for me. You didn't do that for the people that you know, the parents were out there enjoying the service, and you're back there with those kids." 
I remember that. Every time you study, so the kid can, so you can break it down where the kid can understand. He said, I saw that. That did not escape me. That's a part of me determining what I can trust you with in the future. Yeah. You were you were building your resume back in 82 for what for what I'm gonna bring into your life in 2018. Yeah. That person you went to see, you went 3,000 miles to minister to one person that I asked you to minister to. I nobody else knows about it, but I know about it. I saw you. I saw your obedience to do that. Yeah. I'm not ignoring that. Now I see what I can do. I see you're building your determine what I can you're building what I can do and determining what I can give you and bring into your life. Yeah. I saw what you did. I saw how you sacrificed yourself with your money so that somebody else can move forward and experience some things in their life that wouldn't ordinarily happen. I saw you take your money and put your life on hold yeah. so that somebody else, I saw that. And I, that is part of what the determining factor, what I can bring into your life. Glory. All of that. He said, this is why. This is what I'm looking at. I'm not looking at how much you know. I'm looking at what you're doing or what you have. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So, so my question to you is, you know, what are you doing with what you presently have? Because maybe you're expecting something to come into your life. Maybe you're praying. Maybe you're, you're sowing. Maybe you're speaking. Maybe you're declaring. Maybe you're fasting for it. But, but it's what I'm doing with what I have that determines what flows into my life. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, so even today, you're not wasting your time. Let somebody put a pistol to your head. <laughs> you know, I know some of y'all be in here packing. <laughs> But no, unless somebody put a pistol to your head or, or they trick you, they bribe you to come. Even if, even if they did that, guess what? God is taking note of it. Yeah, amen. God is good. What God has placed inside you is enormous. Remember we are talking about the talents. What God has placed in you is out of this world. Whether it's five, whether it's two, whether it's one, it's enormous before God. And God is saying, I put it there, and what you do with it is a determining factor of what I bring into your life. Now, let's move on. You, you, you good? Yeah. So I'm going to talk about what you're doing with what he's giving you. Look at verse 16. Uh, then he who had received the five talents went and traded them and made another five talents. So he doubled. So he had 80 years worth, now he's got 160 years of income. You think your kid's happy about that? <laughs> you know, I know dad, I like dad, I know he's gonna be around here, but he ain't gonna live here in 160 years. <laughs> this trust fund gonna be sweet. <laughs> yeah, dad, I love you, oh, keep it going. <laughs> keep serving Jesus. So anyway, uh, okay, so, so he doubled it. Now, now, I don't know if you, well, anyway, I don't know if you know how difficult it is to double your money. It's one thing to increase it. To double it, it takes a lot of strategic planning, takes a lot of uh, 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 discipline, it takes a lot of, it takes, it's to double, it's a lot of effort. It's a lot of effort. Amen. Most folks can't double their money in a short part. It takes, you know, you know, you have a long, if you got 50 years, it'd be easy to double it. But most people can't double it. So my point is, it takes a lot of effort. Verse 17, and likewise, he who had received two gained two more. So he doubled his. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his lowest money. Wow. Two different reactions, two different scenarios. The two doubled and one did nothing with it. The Bible goes on to say the guy was lazy, he was fearful, he didn't want to take any risk, he just wanted to have what he, he just wanted to keep what he had and then give God back to what he had, give back what he was received. Now, here's one reason why he only got one. Because he was lazy, fearful, this is why he only got one in the first place. I think the reason why the other two 
uh, got what they got because God knew that they won't do everything they could to utilize their gift and double this gift and maximize this gift. And see, this one, he said, well, I'm going to give him a shot. He said, yeah, okay, yeah, that's what I, th that's what I thought. <laughs> now, verse 19, after a long time, the Lord of those servants came and did what? Settled accounts with them. He settled the accounts with them. Now, I want you to notice They didn't all have the same amount of talent, but they did have the same amount of time to do something with what they had. He said they came to settle. Here's a book, bookkeeping term. It's a bookkeeping term. The Lord came to settle. I don't know if you ever had a financial audit, uh, you know, we we had this uh, finance the church audited. We we're doing it every year. One time it was costing us a fortune, and then we just hired this company to handle all our money. So we just paid them a fee every month. Then the audit was costing us what ten, fifteen thousand dollars. They just come in here and look at them. Then they said, "Wow, you guys are great." <laughs> I'm like, "Okay, well we don't need to spend you pay you fifteen thousand dollars for you to tell us how great we are." So anyway, we we kind of figured that out. But my point is. When they settle, it's a, that's a bookkeeping term. They're looking, they're analyzing. Is the money being spent? Where, where is it going? Um, uh, are you getting what you, what you paid for? Analyzing, investigating. Is, 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 this, is this the proper use? All of that. And so he said the master coming to settle his account. This is what Jesus does with our lives. He's analyzing your fruitfulness. How effective are you for the kingdom? You have gifts. You have time. This room is filled with people with gifts and talent. And, and God is examining each one of us saying, what are you doing with the gift you have? What is what's in you? How is it impacting my kingdom? How is it impacting the people around you? How is it impacting believers? How is it impacting those that don't believe? What you're doing, your, 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 your gift, your gift, what God has placed in you, is it, is it increasing? Are you developing it? Is, it? is it producing more? Is it yielding more? Is it, you know, they doubled theirs. Or have you doubled yours? This is what Jesus is looking at. There's come a time. See, he said, you know, the good thing about what I'm talking about today is he said the master has gone for a long time. They had plenty of opportunity yeah. and to, to maximize their opportunity. Well, Jesus had gone for a long time. Now, I don't know when he's coming back. I don't know if he's coming back this evening. I hope not because I'm going on vacation tonight. <laughs> and I want to get down to the beach. But, <laughs> no, no, if he comes tonight, I'll be good. I'll be good. You know, he got all the beach I need. You know, we're going we gonna to rule and reign. We're not going to live in heaven floating around. You know, we're going to be up there for a while, and then we're going to come back to earth. I told him I want Maui. <laughs> she took us up. That's Dr. Garner's daughter, Anna, right? Yeah. I understand. She took us out on the boat. Um, we were whale washing. We saw a lot of whales, too. But anyway, so I asked him for Maui. I don't know if you claimed it or not. <laughs> You might need some help managing it. <laughs> but anyway, here's my point. God coming back to say, what are you doing with this? You're a husband and a father. I gave you the gift to be a husband and a father. How are you managing your gift? I gave you the gift to be a mother. I'm just not picking on y'all like, okay, why don't you go somewhere else? <laughs> but, 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 but it's who, yeah. See, we're not just talking about, oh, oh yeah, and singing all of that. That's part of it. But every other gift, God has given me gift. You know, I'm a pastor, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a father, I'm a husband, uh, you know, I mess with people, I don't know. I got all kinds of labels. But the gift, he's given me a gift to communicate, to inspire people to live for God. What am I doing with that? He's giving me airways. I just have somebody, he's giving me airways, and radio, and TV, and, I, and, and, and what am I doing with that? I have opportunity. People come to listen to me. I can't sit up here and I do, I do, you know, I do, you know, I do make you laugh. 
But that's all part of it. Because the medicine goes down better Amen. when you're happy. So I give you a little, I give you a little joy juice, and then we put the medicine in there. And that's all a part of, that's all a part, that's all a part of the gift though. So I so as I talk about me, and this is where I got emotional this week. Because God, I want I want to make it, I don't want to, I don't want to spend all this time, log all this time, and then get to you and you say, I didn't. You were doing you you did what you did, but I didn't want you doing that. That's not what I told you to do. That's good. And you, you, you been with the same woman for thirty nine years. You could have developed. You, how come you didn't develop a little more kindness? Preach. Okay. <laughs> Why did you have to get all loud on that point? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Drew. That's Drew, everybody. <laughs> but, but no. But it's a gift. It's a gift at your workplace. At your workplace. God give me a gift. God planted you there. Are you maximizing in your workplace? Do you bring joy? Do they like, oh Lord, here she come. <laughs> I thought she was off today. <laughs> you know, what's the attitude? Okay, I'm gonna talk about it and, and it'll get a little it's gonna get a little little deep for a minute. It may sting a little bit. Okay? But we got some anesthesiologists in here. Uh, where are you? <laughs> no, you need that before it stings, right? <laughs> My bad. <laughs> so it's going to sting. <laughs> so they had the same opportunity. So, oh, I was talking about he's going to settle these accounts. He's going to settle the account. Now, hold Matthew 25. We're going to go to 2 Corinthians 5 and 1 Corinthians 2 Corinthians 5, then we're going to go to 1 Corinthians 3. Now, this is what Jesus is going to do. See, the parable was talking about the master, but he's teaching about himself. Okay, look up, everybody. Every one of us are going to stand before God. And there's going to be an accounting, an audit, to make sure to see where our records stand. Every one of us. Now, I know you don't hear a lot of teaching on this nowadays, you know, but, but it still doesn't, this is still in front of us. We're going to stand before God and give an account, a settlement on what we did in the body. Look at the scripture here. He says in 2 Corinthians 5, 9, Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each... One may receive the things done in the body according to what he had done. Talking about rewards, whether good or whether bad. So we all are going to stand there. All of us are going to stand there. How many of us? All, all of us. Well, now if you're not a Christian, you're not going to be standing there. That's another one for you. But you want to be at this one. Now, only Christians are going to be at this one. And we're going to stand before Jesus. And we're not standing before Jesus as Savior because he's Savior. That's why we're standing at this one because we accepted him as Savior. We're going to be standing before him now as the judge. As the judge. Here comes as the judge. And, and he's going to, he loves us, but he's going to, we're going to have to give an account. He's going to say, Ken, I anointed you to teach these people about me. Now, I didn't anoint you to entertain them and try to get a big crowd. I, I anointed you to say, what did you do with the gift that I gave you? What did you do with the gift that I gave you? Okay, somebody may be musically kind. What did you do with that gift that I gave you? Did you take it down to the, to the who shot Johnny four times? Or did you take it to the church? <laughs> Drew said, who shot Johnny four times? That's a fictitious name for a nightclub. Well, you are funny. But no, no, no. Cause he's gonna, he's gonna, I'm going to get a account for that. i got to give a account for that. I gotta, you and I are going to, he's going to say, listen, I put this in you. I put, here's the gift I give. You have a gift to write. Now, what are you doing with that writing gift for the kingdom of God to advance my cause? Amen. 
You got all these blogs. What are they doing to increase? I gave you this to be a blessing to people. Yeah, people can receive from it, but but is it being used for me? Are you allowing what I give you to be a blessing? We're going to give account for all of that. Amen. We're going to be account for all of that. You are a father. What did you, did you spend so much time on your fantasy football that you didn't have time to read your baby a book? Okay then. Yeah, yeah, it's a, parenting is a gift. <laughs> you know, uh, the children, you, if, if all of this is going to be, all of this is going to be right in front of us. And we have to have a consciousness of the judge. Amen. God is never going to forget what we've done. He's never going to forget how you how you honored your parents and you and you you served them. He's not going to forget that. All of that is part of it. He's going to see that. See, the Bible says the good and the bad is going to come up. Yes. The good and the bad. So so we want you know we all it's going to be it's going to be okay. We're going we're going to be we're going to be smiling at the end. Well, some of us will. But he's determining what he can bring into your life. Before this, I want him to say, well done, good, and what? Faithful, Faithful servant. So, since you have time, I want you to evaluate. And this is what I've been doing over the last four days. What, you know, because God put, put this on my heart to start studying. What are you going to do? And he said, you can predict where people are going to end up in their lives about what I can bring into their lives just based on what they do. Remember we said Wednesday night, faith, faithfulness in little things produces faithfulness in big things. Amen. Period. Period. Okay. How y'all doing? You got time? You got time to make the adjustment? See y'all, this one, this one, this one, this group here is, yeah. <laughs> All right, can I continue? Yes. I'll stop if you want me to. No. Okay. So, so he said we're all going to stand before before the, the the judgment seat of Christ to give an account for what we did with the opportunities. Did I increase it? Did I develop it? Did I hide it? Did I devalue it? What did I do with it? What did I do with it? And so, uh, we had a conversation about this. I said, wow, you know what? Um, we live with a consciousness. I live with a consciousness. We live with a consciousness of, God, is this your will? Are we doing this? This is not our thing. This is, this is, I could find something else to do. <laughs> now I wouldn't have to deal with all this other stuff, but I have a consciousness of God. I'm doing this for you. You you put this in my heart. I'm gonna I'm gonna study. I'm gonna develop it. I'm gonna increase it. I'm gonna make this gift more valuable. This is for you. Now it's amazing. We do this for jobs. What are you doing? Well, I want to increase my credibility and increase my qualification, and that's good. You need it. But God said, I gave you a gift. I, it, you know, this gift is not going to grow by itself. So you need to practice it. You need to develop it. You need to, you need to sow into it. Amen. And so a lot of times people look at, at other people's lives, and they're like, well, golly, I want to all of that. Well, see, you don't know, you don't know the years of, of, of the faithfulness to what God told them to do, you don't know the years of sowing that, that God placed in their life. I'm talking about sowing their life. You don't know the years of obedience and 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 pushing back and, and self-denial. And God is like, yes, I can bring this into your life now. I can do this. Why? Because, because you were faithful. When you could have ran, you stayed there and you were faithful. When you could have walked out on no children, like all the mother people, you stayed there and said, uh-uh, I'm not, you, I remember one time my wife said, I'm not taking that job, even though we needed the money. <laughs> we needed that money bad. We needed that money. And she said, I'm not taking that job. Why? Because that would take me away from my family at night and on the weekends. God saw that. God saw that. He sees it when you, when you deny yourself 
so that somebody else can move forward or so that his kingdom can be advanced. But he also sees those that's prostituting the gift that he's given them. You know what I mean by that? You're taking a gift God giving you and you're prostituting and you're taking it over here. For folk, and almost maybe sometime almost helping folk go to hell with the gift God gave you. Okay. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So he said, no, you got to give account for the gift. You, you got to give account. Tell me, what did you do with the gift? I'm looking for some increase. I'm looking for some development. I'm looking for something to be better because you came here. And we all going to stand there. So I'm asking you this morning, on this Memorial Day Sunday. You know, Memorial Day means something died. Maybe something needs to die in your life. I'm going to get to that. I got a part. But there's some things, he talks about pruning. Maybe there's some things you need to cut off and die. Because it's, it's, it's taking energy and resources and prayer and money and time and distraction away from what you can be producing. I tell you, this is what I went through. <laughs> God. Ah. So we want to live with a consciousness. God, I want to please you and I want to do what you told me. I don't have to do what, what you all did. I had a, um, can you give me uh, Hebrews 13, 17? I had a guy come to my office this week and he brought this scripture. And um, I'm like, wow. He didn't know I was studying this. And he said, Pastor, I just need to talk to you. Uh, you and Dr. Deb. And, uh, you know, he's a, he's a medical doctor and and uh, been through some things, and God is restoring some things in his life. We were actually down in an uh, intensive care unit last week, and I told her, I turned to her and said, you remember, that's where Pete was over there. And i never forget, when that doctor walked out of that room and said, we, ain't, we, don't, we don't have anything, we don't know what else we can do. We've done everything we can do. And then we said, give us a room. That would be a prayer room. And I said, Dad, you remember that room right there? She said, yeah, baby, I remember that room. Okay. I'm going to read this scripture. This is what he, he came to minister to us the other day. He said, I want to share this with y'all. Because God is doing something miraculous in this life now. I told him, I think I'm going to let you preach, man. He said, this is what he gave me. He said, obey those who have rule over you and be submissive. For they watch over your souls. As those who must give. Give what? Account. Who must give account? Okay, who would that be? Oh, me? That's me? Yeah. And he said, he said, let them do so with joy. He said, Pastor, I don't ever want to be grief to you. I submitted to you, my and my family. I don't ever want to be, I don't ever want you to frown when you see me. It's like, oh, Lord, they're at church today, Jesus. Lord, help me. You know. He said, I don't ever want to be, I want to, I want to be able to, to, to be joyful to you, yes. bring joy to your life. I don't want to be a bad member. I don't want to be a dead weak. He didn't say all this. I'm adding stuff now. <laughs> but he was saying that it was in between the lines. I don't want to be a, a dead beat member. I want to bring joy. And I said, wow, that is so cool. And he been to so much. And, but here's what I, I just thought about. See, one of the reasons why we need to develop our gifts, there's somebody's miracle Amen. in your life. Yes, sir. God didn't put you here just for you. Right. And there's somebody's miracle in you. Yes. And as you minister, not so much minister, but as, you, as you're conscious of, I got gifts. And I don't care what the gift. You may be, your gift may be construction. It may be uh, uh, litigation. I don't know what your gift is. But it's not just for you. And if, and if it came from him, he said, okay, he wants us to be thinking, how can I use this for the kingdom of God? How can I be a blessing to other people? How can I make a difference? And he said, I'm going to hold you accountable for that. I'm going to give you opportunities. And it's up to you to decide whether you're going to take the opportunity. I'm like all over the place right now. Yeah, I know. Thank you. I mean, yeah, I don't like, I know, praise the Lord. But the, the servant, the other servant, he, had, he came up with an excuse of why he couldn't do anything with that one and why he hid it. And a lot of times we come up with excuses that's okay with men, but it's not acceptable with God. And if he, 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 and God puts something on you, and term, he gives you something, and you, we come up with a thousand excuses like, well, you know, when I get older, 
What do you mean when you get older? You know, when my kids graduate, well, when they graduate, you know, and, you know, they're five now. <laughs> or, you know, I will go back to school, but shoot, by the time I get out of there, I'll be 35. Well, how old are you going to be if, if you don't go back to school? You're going to be 35 anyway. <laughs> going to school ain't going to make you older. <laughs> you know, we say things like, yeah, that's true, huh? I still want to be 35 whether I go back to school or not in five years. But these excuses are not going to be acceptable. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Amen. So you, you, you and I need to examine our life now. What am I doing with what he's giving me? Is it effective? Am I developing it? Am I pointing people to the kingdom or away from the kingdom? Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I have to give myself. Go back to, um, no, 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 go, go to 1 Corinthians. I'm going to show this again. Go to 1 Corinthians 13. No, 1 Corinthians 3, thank you. Then we'll, then we'll go back. Hallelujah. You know, I like it when it's quiet like this because we get a lot of good stuff in. Look at verse 13. He said, each one's work will become clear for the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. Of what sort it is. Not what size it is. What sort it is. What sort it is. Because he's, he's talking about, in context, he's talking about there are some that's going to build things purely on, on um, their desires, their flesh. It's going to be flesh. They're going to get all their applause. Oh, yeah, that's wonderful. He said it's going to be purely flesh. And then there's some going to be built on the foundation of uh, gold, silver, uh, platinum, uh, on the foundations of God. And he said the day is going to come when, the day is going to come when, when it's his seat, where our, our works are going to be, our works are going to be uh, betrayed by the fire. You know? And so, and so some people are going to be, uh, he gonna, Jesus is going to get the, the uh, fire thing, torch, the blow torch. This is the blowtorch. And he's going to come up to Lynn. <laughs> hey, Lynn, how you doing? I'm Jesus. How you doing? Blessed. You're blessed. Okay, uh, let's, let's put the works out here, please. Okay. That's the face shield. Jesus don't want any kickback. You're leaning over there for you. Like, like. <laughs> it's the judgment seat. This you and you know, and then then you know, all your all your cousins gonna be looking on, and your friends, it's Christian cousins, and they gonna be like, okay, lens up, lens up there, guys. <laughs> and come Jesus, angels, you know, keep keep the fire extinguishers ready just in case. They got their hazmat suit on, and uh, okay, Lynn, how you doing? You good? Okay. Hey, turn on, guys. <laughs> give me another, give me another hit. <laughs> okay. Oh, they're still there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you did good, girl. Okay, let's see. Uh, Brother John? <laughs> He said, they're going to be tried by the fire. I, nobody else likes to, to be this other example that I'm going to use. I'm just going to, anybody have a, anybody have a match on them? A lighter? I, I guess that'll work. A match would be more effective. You know, I like drama. <laughs> no match? Okay. Okay, let me have a lighter. What you smoking? Black mouse. Huh? Black mouse. How do you turn the phone? <laughs> Jesus. 
Okay, thank you. Blow torch. I need somebody. I need somebody. I need. I need, some, I need to check somebody works. No volunteers. Okay. <laughs> Well, Jesus, Jesus gonna go down the line. It's gonna be a big, gonna be a great day. And so, so after Lynn, Lynn gonna go off. <laughs> work good, work good. You know, she gonna go off dancing. And then the next person gonna come up. Okay, okay, uh, Raymond. Let's see. You ready for your works? Huh? Really? I don't need the blowtorch? <laughs> How you know? Oh, you've been, you been following them around? <laughs> I don't need this? Okay, let's, let's see if this will work. <laughs> Some people work when you ain't going to be able to handle a a lighter. Because they built on the wrong thing. All this stuff going to get burnt up. Psst. Raymond going to be like, you know, they, you know, Pastor told me, he told me not to be hanging out with them cats because, you know, Ugh. now Raymond going to be okay because he's still in heaven. He's just going to be in the sad subdivision. We're going to be on Rejoice Lane. <laughs> Rejoice Forever Estates. What, what, what about your works? If we were to have a line up now, what, what would your work? Would you get the lighter? Or would you have to take the blowtorch and, and have to get a couple of hits just to even put a dent in it? Because that's what Jesus... That's what Jesus is going to do. And he's going to be gone a long time. So, so he just lets us know that we have time to make adjustments. Okay. Now let's go back to Matthew 25. How are we doing? So we want to, we want to, we want to take advantage of the opportunities he's given us. Because he watches over. He's faithful. And I have to ask myself the question. Am I still, I ask myself this question, am I still burning with passion? Or is this old to me now? Is it, am I still burning with passion? Because this is, he wants, he, he, he wants me to ever increase. Am I hiding the gift? Am I okay with it? Am I hanging around people that don't even challenge the gift? Yeah, I go to church and all that, but I'm talking about on a heart level. Am I conscious? Am I conscious of what I'm doing? Is it my works? Am I, am I conscious of expressing and using what God has placed in my life? Am I conscious of that? Am I so afraid of people? I, I'm doing a 32. I got a couple of studies going about, being, about the fear of man being a trap. Am I so in bondage to people's opinions? Am I so unbonded to what people think about me that I, I back up from what God is telling me to do? Amen. Do I want to be so accepted about everybody, by everybody? Do I want to be so, so, you know, okay with everybody mm -hmm. that what he told me to do, I, I hide the gift. He said, I'm going to give account for that. You don't, have to, you don't have to answer to me for that. You know, it's not bad. At least you're going to be in heaven. But I don't know about you, man. I want to please God today. Amen. I want God to be able to say, good, well done, good, and faithful servant. Yes. Amen. And to that end, that's why I, I, I move the way I do. I mean, and I, I want you to know, um, you know, I, I, let me bring this back. I have to give an account. You don't have to give an account for what I have to give an account for. But as a, as a leader, spiritual leader, pastor, there's an accountability on me that you don't have. Right. And I'm ever conscious of it. And so 
there are times, you know, I know everybody doesn't agree with me. Everybody thinks something ought to be done, something ought to be done this way. And, and all that. I'm aware of all of that. That's all comes with it. But one thing that I'm aware of and I'd like for you to be aware of, you know, <laughs> I got to an answer to God, man. I'm serious about that. Yeah. I, I got to an answer to God. And God don't, he doesn't grade on a curve. He doesn't grade on intention. He grades on, on what is it that you're doing with this. And, and though, yeah, and he told me one time, I don't care what the people say, how they treat you. You answer to me. You minister to me from, from what I told you to minister, not based on what they're doing to you. So they can, they can treat you like a dog. I got you. You're accountable to me. So sometimes people are like, I can't believe Pastor did that. Listen, you you don't even, I wouldn't, I love y'all, but y'all are not that important to me Amen. to get in trouble with God. Amen. Not that important. I love every one of you, but not as much as I love him. Amen. 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 And the church said amen. amen. So. Um, so, so you have to learn how to do that. Okay, now go back to uh, Matthew 5. Let's wrap, wrap it up. Matthew 25. Whew. You know what? How much time I got? Okay, I, you know what? Now, let's not go there. Yeah, let's go there. Yeah, I, I got like this whole chapter, but I want to, I'm running out of time. I want you to go with me to verse 26. No, let's go to verse 25. Okay. So now he's dealing with the guy that hid his talent. He said, I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. Now Jesus or the master expected some increase on this thing. No excuses. Well, you know, Pastor, you know, I, you know, I had, I was 29 when I had my child. What that got to do with anything? Like God didn't know. <laughs> oh, I'm a single parent. Well, Mary was a single parent. Yes. They weren't married. Oh, anyway, verse 26. But the Lord answered said to him, you wicked and lazy, trifling. You see all that? That's in there. It's, in between that comma and that why. He said, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Okay, so you know that God always expects increase. Yes. Right? Yes. He said, verse 27, you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I would have received back my own interest. At least. It may not be big increase, but at least there should be some increase. Ladies and gentlemen, barrenness for the Christian is not an option. Amen. Barrenness for the Christian is not an option. He says, so take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. Yeah. Is that fair? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's fair if you're not the one they're taking it from. But he said, take it from him and give it to the one who has ten. Well, pastor, that's, that's, that's not Christian-like. Well, that's why we need to read the Bible. Here's my point on this one. That's why I wanted. There comes a time. Wow. There comes a time when that opportunity is lost. God is long-suffering, but he's not forever suffering. Amen. There comes a time. <laughs> the, the guy with the match was gone for a long time, right? But there comes a time. This guy had the same amount of time, same opportunity everybody else had. There comes a time when he, I believe he takes that opportunity. The benefit you have is like you're sitting here today. And you can make the adjustments like some I made. There comes a time when you lost opportunity. Now the Bible goes on to say there'll be this guy will be cast in the outer darkness, and he, it's not talking about hell. He's talking about okay. See if I go into it, it's just too much. But you can Google it. What he was talking about that the guy was thrown. He would he would throw on a, over a wall where they put the food trash. They didn't have 
trash compactors, and they had lions would come at night, and they would feed on the food. Well, the guy that was tossed over the wall, they they were actually having tied to a rope, and 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 their thinking was, well, we don't we think this guy is a bad guy, but we're really not sure. So they they put him over the wall, and if he was there in the morning alive, they were like, okay, he's innocent. But if he was eaten, they were like, okay, he gone. He was a bad guy. He got what he should have deserved. <laughs> And so the gnashing of teeth is like this guy was so tormented. He's like, oh, God. Oh. You know, he's he, he seeing these lines oh, on the way, walking over there to the food. So he tormented. So that's what he's talking about. So lost opportunities cause you to be tormented because you see somebody else doing what God said you can do or what you should have been doing. And it's a torment to lose opportunities that God has given you. That's what he's talking about. There are such things as lost opportunities. Amen. We don't want to lose our opportunities. Man, I'm thinking about something now. I'm like, God, you're so faithful. He, he, there's something he gives you a chance on. But I'm talking about here, lost opportunity. This is what this guy, not only did he, he lose opportunity, but he lost his opportunity because he wasted it. An opportunity. Yeah. Now, so, so he was judged and he was cast out. I want you to go to John chapter fifteen real quick, and then this is where we'll stop. Whew. Thank you, Lord. I would encourage if you're really interested, get the teaching I did on Wednesday night about faithfulness. Because God is going to reward us not on how much we do, on how well. He's going to reward us based on how well we did it and how well we did what he told us to do. Okay. John chapter 15. And next time I'm with you, maybe I, I'll preach this whole thing. I just want to give you this. He says now in verse 2, Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear what? More fruit. So, okay, let's read, uh, give me the amplified version of that as well, please. Any branch of me that does not bear fruit, that stops bearing fruit, he cuts away, trims off, takes away. And he cleanses and repeatedly prunes every branch that continues to bear fruit to make it bear more and richer and more excellent fruit. What do you think Jesus has on his mind right here? Fruit bearing. I don't know how many of you do plants and all of that. And I thank God our awesome garden ministries put our plants out yesterday. But the reason why you, based on this, the reason why you prune plants is so that it can do what? Produce more. And... You know, I have a I have this one bush at the house and it's beautiful now, but they they pruned it, they cut it back because it's a, this thing is just going crazy, and they cut it back and it looked bad, it looked bad. Everything else around it was wonderful, and they they just cut it way back and they pruned it. But what happens is, what happened with it was leaves and branches were growing, but they weren't fruit producing branches. So the life of the tree of the, the the vine the sap in the vine is what produces the fruit on the branch you got me yeah, yeah. but there are some trees you look at some trees and they don't produce fruit but they're producing more leaves i had a i went and like cracked a little branch and it was green but it wasn't producing flowers but it was green inside so that told me that some of the life in the vine, on the trunk of it, was the life was flowing to it. But it wasn't producing flowers. What good is it? And this is what Jesus was saying. He said, sometimes there are the life and the sap producing energies go to a branch, but the branch is not producing fruit. He said, that's not good because there's other branches producing fruit. So he says to do what? Prune it. Prune it. Cut the non-producing fruit 
branch off. Why? Because it's taking energy and sap from the trunk and from the vine, and it's stealing from it. But it's not. But it's not using it, and it's of no benefit. So he said, we need to move that off and cut that off out the way and redirect, ha, huh? redirect the sap to the one that's producing flowers. So we'll have richer, abundant, and more flowers. Because he said, yeah, and so, so now he's talking about us. There are things in our lives we need to prune. There are things that we've allowed to get distracted by, lose our focus, and we're putting energy into it, we're putting money into it, we're putting time into it, we're putting prayer into it, but it's not producing fruit. He said you got to cut it off. Every one of us need to analyze what's going on, where am I putting all this time, where am I putting all this energy, what's causing me to worry about this, what, what is it, is it producing fruit if it's not that is stealing from my producing fruit life part of my life and now I'm fragmented wow. so he says he says it needs to be, we need to prune it there's some relationships you need to prune Amen. they're toxic uh, uh, energy draining creativity draining uh, peace destroying dream thieves Type of thing, he said, cut it off so that your energy can go over here to what's working. There are things in your life that's what working, there are things in your life that's what not working. And he said, prune it. And he said, and this is what Jesus said, he said, Now, the fine dresser, if you don't do it, he's gonna do it. He wants you to do self correction. But if you don't do something, because he loves you too much. He loves you too much. If you decide you're not, he, he loves you too much. And he'll be gentle. He'll be gentle. <laughs> but the thing, he said, no, you're supposed to bear fruit. You know, I talked to, I talked uh, the other day, Mother's Day. Remember? Yeah, Mother's Day. And I was talking about the, the Jewish uh, culture and the Eastern culture, how they, the older the people get, the more honor and respect they get. You remember that? And I said, in our culture, it's just the opposite. We want to take a two-year-old and make a little God out of him. You know, and just ask the old people, okay, y'all go, thank you, bye-bye. And, uh, and God said, you know, that ain't right. And so he, he, he spoke to me. He said, I want you to, to start something for the seniors. So uh, I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do, but everybody over 60. Everybody over 60. Think about it. Think about it. How, okay, how many people in here over 60? We probably don't have that many. Oh, one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven. Okay. So how many? 60 times seven. How many? 420. How many y'all over 70? Okay, we got one over here. Okay. Okay, well, you like the senior, senior. <laughs> Think about all the wisdom, Amen. all the knowledge, yeah. all the experience. Yeah. That, okay, that's 70, but all the 60s, all of, I mean, my God, just, just there alone. <laughs> No, I'm just playing. I'm playing. But I think it was six people. All I'm with them, and, and people don't want to sit down and listen to us. Look, we've been here for a minute. That's the thing we, we forgot more than you probably ever learn. Amen. <laughs> Another word. No, that probably wasn't nice. Take advantage of that. And he talked about it. But well, this was the script he gave me. He said, didn't I tell you? I forget where it is. Maybe you can look it up. He said, you will produce fruit even in your old age. Yes. Yes. So we, we're not retiring. Amen. There's a restructuring. Yeah. And we're going to, we still produce fruit. That's the will of God. Amen. So, but God is saying, listen, get serious about your life. Listen, you act like you got a hundred more years to live. You don't got the... Prune some stuff. Produce some fruit. Let that sap go into something that's producing and that's something that you that you cause you to be unforgettable. Yeah. That's what sent us. And that's what Jesus is looking for. And that's what he provided for us. God's not done with you. He's not done with you. He's not done with me. But one thing for sure, if we don't have a consciousness of, Lord, I want to please you. I want to make sure my life would come. If I'm off, and this is what I told him, I said, Lord, if I'm doing anything, and there's a couple of things he told me with the church. He said, okay, I'm, you know, he said, you need to cut, cut this off. 
and restructure that. Re okay, I'm going to do it. What are people going to think? I don't care. I mean, I care, but I, I got to answer to him. Amen. I mean, it's going to be good because then whatever he asks you to do, it's going to be good. Amen. And God knows everybody. But what I want you to leave here with, I'm going to pray in just a minute. And I want you to make a decision to analyze your life. Analyze it and be, the Bible says, to judge yourself. I'm not supposed to be judging you. You judge yourself. I got enough right here to be judging and, and looking at. And, and listen, and listen, you know, don't tell anybody about it. Why? Because you won't be honest. So I want you to get brutally honest with yourself. This is not producing. Why are you doing it? Well, I'm comfortable. Comfortable. You might be comfortable, but is it pleasing to him? I hope you receive this today. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes your own family, they don't understand. You have to do some things. And like, Why are you doing this? Because I love God. And you'll be the beneficiary of it, but just, just stay the course. Father, we thank you today. For speaking to us, we thank you for showing us, and we thank you for helping us look for what you're looking for. Our lives are supposed to be making a difference. Our lives are supposed to be a blessing to someone else. Someone else's miracle is inside of us. Father, I thank you. Eileen's here. I thank you for what you did in her life, for her father this week and last week, and how you orchestrated some things and she had no idea how you were going to do it but her faith that she has in you hallelujah created a miracle for her father father you called all of us to be a benefit outside of ourselves and as we tap into that even though we're not perfect you're willing to work with us to bring forth fruit my prayer for everyone here today every Christian that there'll be no fear standing before God well that day is going to come but even today we stand before you every single day Father help, help us to be conscious of your goodness in the name of Jesus and then Father for those that are here they're going to stand before you they won't be at the judgment seat of Christ because if they were to die today they will stand before you, not as the Savior, but as, not as the judge, but as the, the Savior that they rejected. So I want to give people opportunities. If you're here today and you never accepted Jesus, the Savior, you need a Savior. God sent you a Savior for your life, for your destiny. He sent you as Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can get to the Father except through me he's your way he's your truth he's your door he's your savior he's the one that'll help you manifest everything that god has for you if you're here today you're not born again you never accepted the goodness of god or the grace of god in your life a person on a personal level on a personal heart level i want to give you an opportunity to do that because that's the greatest thing and then this other thing we were talking about you'll tap into what god has given you and we'll help you do that so I pray now that not one person leaves here without receiving the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. I bind every force that will try to keep you from stepping into it in Jesus' name. Now, before we pray this other prayer, I'm going to pray for everyone, but I want to pray for you if you're not born again. Is there anyone here this morning who said, Pastor, I'm not born again. I need to change my life. I need something that's bigger than me. I've tried too many times to do things I need. I need a savior. I, I, I figured it out. And I want to receive him today. Is there anyone like that? Would you raise your hand if you're standing here or sitting here and you know this is what missing in your life. I want you to pray with me. Is there anybody? I want to pray. I don't ever want to just part of the gifting that God has given me is to help people come into the kingdom of God. And um, I will never, ever, ever neglect that because somebody, somebody gave me the opportunity. Thank you, Jesus. Is there anyone like that before we pray? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Okay. 
All right. Here's the takeaway from the message today. The takeaway is that I will examine, scrutinize, analyze my life. The takeaway is, Jesus, I want to produce fruit. I want to be proud of what you've given me. That when I give it back to you, you'll see, well done, good and faithful servant. I want to pray a commitment prayer. If you're ready to make that commitment, at least to examine your life. If you're ready to make the commitment to at least examine your life. Because better is possible for you. Better is in you. And I'm telling you, the Bible talks about, I didn't read it, but it says that Jesus said, Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. There's a joy that you enter into when you're faithful to what God has given you. All hell can be breaking loose around you. There's a level of joy that you can't get anywhere else or any other way. If you say, Pastor, I'm committed to examine my life. I'm committed to do that. I want to pray with you. If I'm talking to you, I want you to stand. We're going to pray together and make a commitment to not be so earthly bound and thinking but that we'll understand I need to do what I do to please God if you want me to pray if you want to join my prayer excuse me I want you to stand please God has given us some precious things <sighs> and this is how we impact our world praise God Praise God. Thank you, Lord. I want you to pray this with me. Or pray it after me. Say it after me. Father, in Jesus' name, Father, in Jesus name I thank you, I thank you for, the for the treasures that's in this earthen vessel. This vessel. The gifts you've given me. The, given the me. opportunities you've given me. Given me. I, am grateful for that. I am grateful for that. Now I'm asking you to help me to, help me. to be ever conscious of everything, of everything you placed in, you placed in me. Help me, Help me to develop. To, develop. to <laughs> Help me to develop, Help me to develop. Maximize, maximize the things you've given me, you've given me. And, to and to impact your kingdom, your kingdom. Like, never before. like never before. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. I give you permission to arrest, my attention, to arrest my attention so that I can be, so I can be faithful, faithful and impactful, and impactful for, God. for God. Lord, I thank you for loving me enough to place in me the goods in Jesus' name. Now, Father, I pray for every single one of them God, I pray that the consciousness of what we do and the consciousness of the gift and how we use it is so real to all of us that we'll never, ever compromise it. We'll never, ever allow what we feel, what others feel. We'll never, ever allow anything else to usurp the authority and the commitment you made to us. We won't allow anything to stop that in Jesus' name. I pray that, Father, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now say this with me. I am determined to bear fruit for the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. You can be 